Hey guys, welcome back. So last time we took a look at why certain notes sound good together and others don't. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, feel free to do so. Also, I just wanted to say that I really, really appreciate the donations that I received for the last video. It really means a lot to me and every bit counts during these crazy times. So I really appreciate it. And uh, once again, I'm gonna be posting a donation link in the description below. It's gonna have my PayPal information on it. So feel free to give whatever you want. And there's also gonna be a link to donate to the music school that I teach at, which is Sam School of Music. Sam School of Music's a nonprofit organization and they're dedicated to building unity and awareness through music. Uh, they do all kinds of local shows, you know, children's programs, but right now we're all having a tough time because of this coronavirus thing. Any donations to them are also appreciated. So again, I just wanted to say thank you and thank you to all of you who are watching. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave any questions that you have down in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. Now let's get back to learning some music. So one quick thing before we start. As some of you guys pointed out last time, a note sounding good or bad really depends on who you ask. As humans, we learn to find patterns based on our experiences. And since, for most of us, our musical experiences come from Western music, many of these ideas of what sounds good or bad just come from what we're used to hearing and the connections that we form in our brain. Uh, there's several books on the neuroscience of music, and I'd highly recommend them for more information about how music interacts with the brain. It's something that I'm actually really interested in. But with that aside, let's jump into today's topic. So today I thought we'd have some fun and talk about how to make any happy song sad, or how to make any sad song happy. So to start off with, what makes a song sound happy or sad? Well, this is another one of those tricky topics in music theory because it is very subjective. Everyone has their own idea of what they consider to be happy or sad, but there are some common features that tend to pop up that most of us could probably agree on. Some of these are elements like subject matter, tone of voice, how fast or slow a song is, but today I'm gonna narrow it down and focus just on what I think is one of the most important things, and that's what notes we choose to use. So the group of notes that a song uses is often called the key of the song. And this group of notes gives us a specific scale. And all that is is a group of notes that are put together in a neat order. Two of the most common scales that we use are the major scale, which most of us agree sounds happy, and the minor scale, which most of us agree sounds sad. So these scales normally start with a low note going to higher and higher notes until you get back to the note that it started on. For example, this is what the C major scale, the happy scale starting on C, looks like written out. It starts on the C note, which is the root, then goes up the alphabet to D, E, F, and then G. Since we don't have an H note, it loops back to A again, then B, and then finally we get all the way back to C, and then we stop. Well, so some songs go pretty crazy and use more than one scale for one song, but today let's just keep it simple and assume that we're just gonna have one scale, one key for one song. When we do this and we stick to one key for the whole song, we call it diatonic. Okay, so we know that if a song's written in a major key, it's gonna sound happy. So how do we make it sad? Well, I'm gonna show you the trick first, but stick around afterwards if you want a more in-depth discussion of how I did it. So what's the secret? Well, the short answer is you have to know how to change a scale from major to minor. It's almost like decoding it. Well, how are you gonna do that? Turns out all you have to do is go to certain notes in the scale and lower them by a half step, making them flat. Well, let's try it with that C major scale that we saw earlier. Here's what the original scale sounds like. Now if I go and change the E to an E flat, the A to an A flat, and the B to a B flat, well here's what it sounds like now. Sounds a lot more sad, right? Well all we had to do to get that was lower the third, sixth, and seventh notes of the scale. Okay, so here's where it gets fun. Let's take a happy song that was written in a major key. I'm gonna be using Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. And let's see what it sounds like when we make it into a sad minor song. So here's how the original song sounds. Cause the player's gonna play, 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 play. And the haters gonna hate, 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 baby. I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake. Shake it off, shake it off. Now, if we want to make it sound sad, all we have to do is flat or lower the correct notes. Since we're in the key of C, this means turning all of the E's into E flats, all of the A's into A flats, and all of the B's into B flats. So let's see how the song sounds now. 
The players gonna play, 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 and the haters gonna hate, 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 and I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake it off, shake it off. Well, there you go. But what if you wanted to do the opposite and make a sad song happy? Well, all we have to do is the exact opposite of what we just did. We're gonna take a minor scale and turn it into a major. Since the third, sixth, and seventh degrees of the scale are already gonna be flat, all we have to do is raise them up or make them natural. Let's try it with another Taylor Swift song, Look What You Made Me Do. So here's what the original song sounds like with all the flat notes making it sound sad. I don't like your little games. Don't like your tilted stage. The role you made me play of the fool. No, I don't like you. Now all we have to do is raise those flats and try it again. I don't like your little games. Don't like your tilted stage. The role you made me play of the fool. No, I don't like you. Well, wasn't that something? So how did that work? Well, all a scale is, is a pattern of notes. You start on the lowest one, which is the root, and go up in a series of jumps. Usually these jumps are made up of half steps or whole steps. Looking at the keyboard, we can see the difference. A half step is where you have no in-between black note, and a whole step is where there is an in-between note. As you can see, a whole step is just two half steps stacked on top of each other. If we start on a C as our root, we can get the C major scale by jumping up a whole step, then another whole step, then a half step, followed by a whole step, a whole step, one more whole step, and then a final half step. This pattern that we get, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, is actually how you get any major scale. For example, if you wanted to find the D major scale, you would just use the same pattern, but starting on D instead of C. So what are we trying to find here? We want to know what pattern a minor scale is. Well, if we stick to using these same notes, but we start on A instead of C, we actually get the A minor scale. It has these notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and goes back to A. Well, this is called the relative minor to C major, since it uses all the same notes as C major and is therefore related to it. But what we're looking for is what's called the parallel minor. That's the minor scale that starts on C, C minor. Well, we already have this A minor scale, so how can we use this to extract the secret formula for a minor scale? What is the pattern? Well, here, let's look at it. Going from A, we have a whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. Well, that's our pattern. So now all we have to do is go back to our C major scale and change it up so that it matches this pattern. And what changes would give us this pattern that we found? Well, some of you guys may have guessed it. You flat or lower the third, sixth, and seventh degrees of the scale. And now it matches. And that's exactly what we did before. Well, thanks again, guys, and let me know if you have any video ideas or questions in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. See you guys next time.